maybe I feel like you're the only one that I can talk to, <laughs> to <Yeah>. about. <laughs> it's, just it's cause nice. like, um, just like in, in ways that like is either really nerdy or like so specific that it, there's no point in bringing it up to oh, anyone else. No. Yeah. You bring it up <laughs> to anybody else. They're like, why does that matter? I yeah. don't care how the spacing looks. I don't care. But yeah. you know, it's all about the details. And mm-hmm. nobody really likes to talk about the details. Yeah. They don't think it's important. It's and, so important. And it's not even just design, like, in graphic design, but also design in, like... Everything. Everything. I'm looking at the quote, sorry. Um, and so, for example, I always notice it whenever bathrooms that have doors, mm-hmm. uh, if the way into the bathroom is a push door rather than a pull door. Because what doesn't make sense is that if you go into the bathroom with your hands unclean, you push the door, you go to the bathroom, wash your hands, then pull the door open. That doesn't, yeah. Makes your hand dirty. Yeah. And so. I hate that. And I notice it every time <laughs> because it's like, that's a design flaw. Mm-hmm. Um, if all, if, if everything was, um. Sorry, I can't find the actual... Place. It is fine. But um, if everything was designed properly with bathroom doors, mm-hmm. they would all be just put like a swing door, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I get the whole, you know, one room kind of thing, like mm-hmm. those stalls that like lock or whatever, mm-hmm. but there needs to be some way... That's still to mm-hmm. me like it can be a design flaw. Like, you know, you tell people hygiene, but you put the sink over here and the doors over here with the pull lever. There's no yeah. way for them to even try and dispose of a towel mm-hmm. they're holding. Mm-hmm. I know that's like super granular detail, but, yeah, but it, it just proves how it, important designing everything mm-hmm. is. It contributes to stuff. Yeah. Um, for example, um, in the life church bathrooms, um, the... Those are fine. Because well, they don't have a door. Yeah, but not not about the doors, but... I don't know if the know women's the restroom. I don't know if the women's bathroom restroom has it, but the men's restroom has a bowl of mints by the sink. We do. Um, we also have lady things. But it's <laughs> but it's weird because the bowl of mints is in between the sinks mm. rather than on the way out. Because if I wash my hands, then dry them, I have to go back for the mints. <laughs> I'm not going to reach into the bowl yeah. with my wet hands. It's kind of like the whole thing that, you know, <laughs> if you're at a bar and you reach into a bowl of peanuts, mm-hmm. that's, like, got the most some of the most germs yeah. ever. It's not very well planned. Well, that, but, like, <laughs> if I... <laughs> if I grab a mint before I've washed my hands, that's gross. Yep. If I grab the mint after i wash my hands, my hands are wet. If I grab the mint after I've dried my hands, which the towel is on the way out, then I have to turn around to grab the mint. Yeah. Or even if you <laughs> wash your hands and then get a mint, you don't know who else has not washed their hands, grabbed a mint anyway. Exactly. And so you're just re- yeah. And so, <laughs> like, design flaws, I notice them a lot, uh-huh. and it's just like, mm-hmm. if I were to point them out to anyone else, they'd be like, you're neurotic. <laughs> well, the quote that I was going to look up, which I'll have to find it like later, you can look for it, it's what I live by with design, mm-hmm. is that good design is invisible. Mm-hmm. But when design is bad, you see it everywhere. Yeah. And people are like, well, that doesn't make sense. And it's like, no, it does, because mm-hmm. good design is meant to be invisible, because yeah. you are literally just trying to get the job done with stuff like, you know, engineer and design kind of things, mm-hmm. architectural design. You need it to be out of the way right (laughs) or it can also be appreciated in an Mm -hmm. artistic manner if it's a visual communication thing you just need to communicate your point but if it's badly communicated you'll Mm -hmm. focus on everything else but the point exactly and then and then some design is bad enough to the point to where it communicates the opposite exactly what it's intended like funeral flyers that are in comic sans (laughs) i have seen them before comic sans does not belong anywhere except on the backpack of your child in elementary school comic sans maybe Comic Sans belongs in comic books. That's fine. That's <laughs> literally what it was for. <laughs> it's uh, I've seen it on funeral arrangements mm-hmm. and flyers for like churches. Yeah. And it just makes me sad. And and <laughs> Sable gets good. Sable gets annoyed with me about it, but like I always point out papyrus. Oh, me too. Just because like 
It's frustrating. It's also in a lot of movie posters, which is funny. <laughs> so I'm like, you put millions and billions of dollars into a movie, and you can't have the poster design well. Yeah. All of them look the same. Mm-hmm. You can always tell what kind of movie this is going to be based mm-hmm. on how it's designed. And so, <laughs> there is, like, an extent to which, like, design is invisible, or if it is visible, like, I guess maybe for someone as, I guess, like, picky about design, like we are, like, we do notice the good design because we noticed how not noticeable it was, you know? Yeah, because it's not in the way you can just appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so, like, the way that we design uh, web pages or graphic design or just, like, a Mm -hmm. poster in general is meant to, like, draw your eye in a certain direction Mm -hmm. or like, have you, like, grocery stores, for example, Mm -hmm. um, there's, like, you know, the random junk that you don't want in the front, so that you buy that, Mm -hmm. or you grab that. The bread and nuts in the back, so you go to the back and Mm -hmm. work your way up, yep. Um, (laughs) See anything else along the way? (laughs) Yeah, that's a design thing (laughs) for, like, store owners to buy more things. Um, and you don't notice it because... As a customer, you're just like, oh, cool, this thing's on sale, I'll buy that, you know? And then we just get trapped in, like, the One of the my of... <laughs> teachers, which I explained in the podcast we just did, um, mm-hmm. Amy Johnson, very influential professor mm-hmm. throughout college, my first professor I ever experienced, she has this great quote where it's like, I believe it was her, it could have been somebody else, but mm-hmm. she always said this, where design is board games and mind control. Mm-hmm. So... How is love that? Cause I was like, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. And I finally gave it what it means. Like, you have to kind of play a game to figure out the best way to control your audience and the yeah. minds of the people to either persuade them for something, against something, or to communicate mm-hmm. an idea, or, you know, as simple as a grocery store thing mm-hmm. where you, you're not, they're not even thinking about it. They're just controlled to go mm-hmm. follow the way the design is. Mm-hmm. So, it's fascinating. <laughs> and I then, always geek out about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, like, at the same time, design is also a tool. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't necessarily have to do good or do bad. Um, depending on your point of view, the whole grocery store thing is a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're a store owner, that's a very good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, we we had an interview with Maynard James Keenan, who's the lead singer of Tool at school. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> your rock school. Day. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, he had said that he he worked at some pet stores, and he applied that principle to the pet store by uh, putting the dog food in the back of the pet store. Oh, man. (laughs) Did it work? Well, yeah. He got promoted. Instead of being, like, cleaning crap out of bird cages, he, you know, became, like, a manager. Wow. Yeah. Um, (laughs) um, So stuff like that, but, like, at the same time, there's design that kind of has an ill intent, Mm -hmm. um, stuff like propaganda. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's effective. Yeah. Even, yeah. Um, so if you will allow me to get political, um, (laughs) I'm can, for for forewarning, I can be rather apathetic politically, but that's just, um, go for it. (laughs) But like the way that, um, Donald Trump's campaign is just fueled by um, just good feelings in a way, <laughs> rather than being fueled by um, the actual things that he might do. Mm. Um, and so, like, in good the way... for some people. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, the slogan, like, Make America Great Again... All his stuff is in, like, red, white, and blue, and, like, mostly blue, obviously, because, uh, Republican, but, um... Well, red? Red? Blue? Red. I don't even know. Blue is usually Democrat, right? Whatever. Sure. Okay. Red's alarming, Um, so... Okay, yeah, so... (laughs) It makes sense sense for his stuff. Um, but it's all, like, you know... America colored. It's all like, hey, look at this guy. His Trump, or like his Trump logo is in like 
bold, like, big fat letters to show you, like, it's big and dominating and, like... To be fair, though, all of them have the red, white, and blue, I believe. Yeah. I think um, that's just a staple you have to have, but anyway, probably. Go on. Um, but, like, in, in the messaging, it just says, like... Oh, we are America, and we are great, and mm-hmm. I am great. Mm. Um, you don't know what he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> um, yeah, well, Jeez. I mean, at least his campaign does. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. That's what's <laughs> that's when the design kind of turns into this like good versus evil thing, but yeah. at the same time, not. It's almost kind of like when lawyers accurately and effectively defend mm-hmm. the the bad the, the bad villains wow <laughs> bad criminals yeah. you know what i mean like they have to have a lawyer and the lawyer has to do their job so mm-hmm. even a designer if they're getting paid to do a job and they're like yeah. i hate trump and everything he stands for if, if they say that they still have to make his campaign mm-hmm. successful or just you know yeah refuse the job or but... refuse the job <laughs> or just not eat <laughs> yeah. i mean yeah it would be very morally conflicting for me to do a job like that but that's <laughs> You know, um, you have to separate yourself from your work anyway. Yeah, kind of, but um, but even stuff like propaganda that uh, I mean, fun fact: propaganda in English says like messaging intended to like brainwash people. That's mm-hmm. kind of like the connotation between uh, in Spanish. Propaganda means commercial. Commercial, like, yeah, like just. Commercials that you see in between your TV show. That's like, hilarious. That's what propagandas are. Wow. Um, and so, you know, in a way there is a sort of propaganda behind the word <laughs> propaganda. Yeah. Um, it's been given its own, it's a different meaning. Yeah. Um, but the way that, you know, design uses that is by, you know, uh, what's a lot of like... Soviet, like, you know, Cold War era propaganda. It was like, like, a bold, bold, graphic. like, monochromatic, yeah. like. And a lot of the monochromatic had to do with printing. Yeah. At the time, and the printing <laughs> presses, um, which is a whole other thing we won't have to get into. <laughs> but it, it ended up being kind of with that imagery. Like, yeah. people think of that instantly with that imagery. Mm-hmm. And so if people are recreating that look, that's what they go towards. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also, like, it also creates sort of, like, a sense of unity that, like, oh, the red, like, we are red, like, and so, like, the propaganda and the design sort of creates a unity, whether or not it's good or bad intended. Um, what's some of your favorite, like, invisible design that, you've seen (laughs) oh oh big question (laughs) i'm not so good with designers specifically because a lot of them belong to studios Mm -hmm. or you know they don't necessarily it's not like art where you put your name on it Mm -hmm. you're kind of um trying to think of something as of recently i'm very fond of anything that uses negative space Mm -hmm as a concept because I feel like less is more. My yeah. personal favorite kind of style is less is more mm-hmm. because I feel like you can like design can be invisible that way even more yeah. so. Um, I'm trying to think of what it was that I saw. <laughs> Anything that sort of uses that sort of negative space feel to promote like emptiness or mm-hmm. discontentment. I've yeah. seen that used a lot in things. Mm-hmm. I can't name anything specifically. Or it's seen as, like, encompassing this figure or whatever mm-hmm. in a grand scale. Yeah. So anything that that's not very specific. This is yeah. great radio, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> anything that's super specific. But in general, my eye is immediately caught by something that has mm-hmm. a lot of negative space. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, why are they using this? And if it makes sense to why they're using it, I'm mm-hmm. pretty sold. If it doesn't, I'm just like, they just didn't know what to put there. They didn't know how to design it, so they made it minimal. That's not always the answer. Um, A lot of propaganda used kind of Mm -hmm. minimalism and and negative space as well to be effective, but a lot of that was kind of busy. So I'll probably Um, think of like 20 things after all of it. Um, 
earlier you had mentioned like memes and stuff. Oh, gosh, like, yeah. For whatever reason, like, why are memes popular? For me, yeah. I'm such a visual person mm -hmm. that sometimes I can only convey things visually. It's yeah. weird because I also like the written word. So mm -hmm. those two together work because it's like the words on top of pictures, even though it's, you know, not the best designed mm -hmm. thing. I read something recently where people are saying memes are becoming like the political cartoon almost. Mm -hmm. Like as soon as something happens, there's usually a meme of it, yeah. right? Um, and about anything. About anything. <laughs> what was it? The guy with the um, Miss Universe pageant? What was his uh, name? Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey. There was memes with mm -hmm. him everywhere like mm -hmm. a day after that happened. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting how everybody uses visual imagery to some extent mm -hmm. to express and communicate. It's interesting, yeah. though, that they usually just stop at that, and they don't try and, like, <laughs> push it further to have it communicate well. Yeah. Why is it that... Okay, so, like, you, you are, like, your job is graphic design. Yes. But, like, most of the internet nowadays is, like, Desire these you? terrible, like, terrible images that have been like degraded because they they're mm. like snapshots of snapshots of snapshots mm. and yeah. then like <laughs> why is it still popular Bad. like do people not care people don't body? care yeah people don't care. i mean the, it, we're in this diy mode right yeah where it's like i can do it myself i'm gonna go on <laughs> pinterest i'm gonna look up something yeah i'm gonna use this template i'm gonna use mm -hmm. squarespace like nothing against squarespace Putting it on the record. Space. I use Squarespace, Thanks, Squarespace too. Space. Yeah, Squarespace, you're awesome. Mm -hmm. But that kind of stuff, whether it's helpful or not, or good or not, it, it makes it very easy for just anybody to pursue that and mm -hmm. not go to trained professionals. That sounds mm -hmm. really high and mighty, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna put that out there because I'm professional. Yeah. So, and it kind of takes that that takes that job from them, so yeah. it's not there. But also, to be fair, it's expensive. Yeah. To pay for a thing to be made to look nice. Yeah. When you don't even know if, you know, the thing you're designing this yeah. thing for is going to work. Like a business. <laughs> like, I want to put a ton of money into a company to make a logo and identity for me. And mm -hmm. what if your business fails? Mm -hmm. You know? That's kind of wasted money. So I think a lot of... But at the same time, people don't invest that. <laughs> and their business fails because they didn't have an identity. Yeah. It's a doggy dog kind of cycle. Mm -hmm. If you don't invest in it, then you won't you know, you yeah. don't have anything there. So, <laughs> but to, you know, long story short, people don't care. <laughs> they try and do it themselves and it just gets more degraded. Yeah. They're also not open to critique. So they, they don't, they get too married to the thing and they don't mm -hmm. want to bring in critique. Not <laughs> saying that if you get critique, you have to change it instantly, but yeah, they don't even want to hear it. So you, they, there's no way for it to get better, even if they did want to do it themselves. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I just... Speaking of Squarespace... <laughs> Sorry, I, Squarespace. I, you, like, <laughs> I know they make my website and everything, and, like, uh, I was talking to you the other day about um, how, like, Apple assumes a lot of things... Yeah, the coding or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it... Squarespace feels like an Apple product in the sense that... I agree. You don't know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. We know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Let us do the thing. Mm-hmm. Which is great to an extent because Squarespace looks good in general. Mm -hmm. My website looks great. Yeah. It's very, like... There's hardly anything on it, and I'm fine with that. Like, I like how my website looks. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, like, my homepage, I want to put my logo on there. But I can't change the logo <laughs> without changing the title. But the title is my, is my name, so Down I have to put slip. my yep. logo with my name. But, like, <laughs> I just want to have my logo. Yeah. <laughs> um... And so in that same way, like, Squares Squarespace is like an Apple product mm -hmm. to where it's like, we think we know what's best. This is what's best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Which it may not always be. Yeah. That's the, that's the thing. Each human being has a different take on design and what yeah. they want. 
And I believe everybody, if they really apply themselves, could be yeah. amazing designers because it, it's, mm -hmm. I think it's ingrained in us too because we, we want things to be visually communicated well. Yeah. And as shown by everyone's MySpace page. Oh, yeah. Everyone's like, I'm a designer because of coding on my MySpace page. Oh, gosh. This glittery <laughs> thing. Oh, I put this text box that can scroll. Yeah. It took me 20 hours to do. Not really. No, but you just copy yeah. and paste the code. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's how you really do it. But, I mean, that's what's funny is, like, even though designers, you always see them using Macs, they would never use the real designers never use template based stuff. They mm -hmm. learn coding and web design because mm -hmm. that totally opens them up for any possibility. I've yeah. seen unbelievably beautiful websites that mm -hmm. are so unique. I don't even mm -hmm. know how they got there, but it's all through coding, man. Yeah. And yeah. So how do you feel about the whole, like, for example, a lot of people really enjoy Minecraft because there's so much to do, mm -hmm. and they just have these endless possibilities. Mm -hmm. A lot of other people are really bored with Minecraft just because they're presented with this giant sandbox, and they're like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, how do I... Yeah, how do you feel about, like, are you more... You enjoy the sandbox, or do you want a little bit of limitation to help guide you along? I think it's hard to explain because I'm kind of a mixture of both. I think my practical side is there needs to be a limitation. Mm -hmm. And you can still, but at the same time, you're given a limitation, but then you creatively know how to break that limitation. Mm -hmm. It's all about knowing the rules and knowing how you can break them. Yeah. In an accurate way. In a good way. Yeah. That's what you, you know, it's similar to, you know, this client comes to you and they give you this super open-minded concept. Mm -hmm. That's terrifying because <laughs> they could literally deny everything or love anything you give mm -hmm. them and it may not be good. So that's when you start asking them for those rules and the limitations. Mm -hmm. And from there, you go outside of those and you have your sandbox. So with design, it's like, it's kind of less of like a sandbox, more of like you have these pillars helping you mm -hmm. stay yeah. afloat, but you can go... <laughs> outside of that or under it or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to have that there. Yeah. It's just all, it's yeah. so vague. I think for me, like, yeah, it is a little bit of that, that, um, as a person who isn't, I guess, by trade, a designer, um, I like, you know, the limitation, like, oh, here, it's easy, you know, just do that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some part of me is like, my website looks good. Oh uh, yeah, it does look good. <laughs> and then other parts of me are like, I wish I could do more. But I want to do this. Yeah. And I just want to, so like, I guess part of me just wants the sandbox to be a little more open, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm not willing to dive into full Linux mode and just like... I'm not either. <laughs> like, write code for my entire website, you know. In this moment, I can yeah. only use Squares, Squarespace. Yeah. I was going to say Squaresoft. Wrong thing. <laughs> um, but like, there is going to be a time where I just go, look Squarespace, you're pretty great, thanks, I'll take it from here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I agree. I mean, some things are, you, like I said, it's about having the sandbox, but you still have to have a boundary, but mm -hmm. you don't want the boundary to be suffocating. You know, mm -hmm. that's the opposite of the example I gave earlier is if you have a client that comes to you and they are so specific about what they want, yeah. you're like, why am I designing it for you? I'm just the production artist at this mm -hmm. point. I am not designing anything. Yeah. I'm just producing it. Yeah. Um, that's what Squarespace has already designed it for you. Mm -hmm. Um, you're just putting in the credentials and they're like, here it is. And some people are okay with that, but <laughs> yeah. normally creative people like you and I, and like almost all of our friends, mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, we're, we don't like those restrictions. Mm -hmm. We're like, well, what if we can do this? But mm -hmm. Squarespace and other places, which they're great, th they are limiting. Yeah. So like, well, what if you just do our thing? Yeah. That's why you signed up for us, right? Which is also why I would never ask you to design something for me because I will be that annoying client and be like, can you just like move here, move over. Let me, I've go. been trained <laughs> to work within that though. Trust yeah. you. I've dealt with every client under the sun yeah. within college experience. Yeah. So it doesn't bother me. I can be like, nope, that won't look good. 
Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not afraid to hurt people's feelings yeah. either. But it's also about sometimes you have to show them what they want mm-hmm. and then be like, this either looks good or mm-hmm. it doesn't look good and now I'll show you what's better. Yeah. Sometimes, the, sometimes we have to trust the client a little mm-hmm. more and not be so cynical. <laughs> Designers are naturally cynical yeah. where we're like, ugh. You know, why do they want to change everything? <laughs> but at some point, they, they're they probably right. I mean, you can't yeah. be like, you know it all. So. <laughs> Which is why I'd rather just, like, ask you for advice rather than just be like... Do this thing. Yeah. 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 Um, just because I do want... I do want some control. I, I want the sandbox, but I also want the sandbox to end at some point. You want the tools in the sandbox yeah. given to you. To, yeah. <laughs> um, that's, I mean, I look at those as the same. Yeah. I mean, I, if I might like words, uh, <laughs> creative director kind of job would be mm-hmm. awesome. Cause that's when you're not really designing the stuff yourself, but you're helping kind of creatively direct people yeah. with options and ideas. So you're indirectly kind of designing, mm-hmm. but, um, so when people come to me for critique, I kind of look at it that way. Mm-hmm. Like, Oh, I can help creatively direct this yeah. for them, but it's cool to see yeah. how they take <laughs> what I tell them and how they make it happen. Yeah. And if you want, I can like hand you a 22 if you're like, <laughs> um, yeah, I just put a slide it under the table. No, I mean, I'm not, I don't know. I'm like, if my friends come to me yeah. for stuff, like there's this awesome chart. I'll have to send you a link to, but um, <laughs> what's her name? Her name's Jennifer. Uh, wow. Words. I forgot her name. Anyway, <laughs> Jessica Hish, Hish, something. Anyway, she created this chart, this flow chart of what work to take and what not to take. Mm-hmm. And her, her <laughs> reasoning is hilarious. You can get the explicit version or the clean version. Um, basically, you, you with friends, there's certain routes you help or yeah. don't do their work. You pretty much always do work for your mom because <laughs> her reasoning was, yeah. you know, she gave birth to you and you can't design her garage flyer, you know, garage yeah. sale flyer. So... <laughs> I mean, with friends, it's like, yeah, you always need to be willing to help Mm -hmm. and critique. Because some people don't (laughs) even want to take critique. So if people come to me for critique, I'm like, cool, yeah, I'll help you. Yeah. (laughs) I'll give you critique. Constructive. Constructive. Glad I do music because (laughs) at least a lot of other people are like, nope, I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. Go for it. That sounds cool. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. (laughs) Yeah. It makes it, it's, it's really nice when everybody's role in their skill and craft can be fulfilled by it's not too much overlap. Like sometimes mm-hmm. it's bad if there's too much overlap. Like I have a problem with wanting to try too many things that mm-hmm. I'm not a total master at anything. Yeah. Sometimes it's nice just to be like, you are a master at music. I can never understand that. So you go for it. I'm going to totally trust you. Yeah. You know, I wish I was, but well, <laughs> to me you are just cause I don't understand anything yeah. about it. But, um, you know, when you produce the music for our skit thing, it's mm-hmm. kind of, I was like, what? how does he work this? But if I were trying to, you know, mess with everything, it would make the process a lot slower. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, no. And I also have something else to bring up, but that'll probably be off record. Um. What's that? Uh, we're going to make a video game. A video game? Cool. Yeah. I'm game. <laughs> Um, It'll probably be slow, like slow production till nah, after yeah, yeah. July. <laughs> um, but so much. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, I think Sable is getting late, anyways. But brought um, that up to me. Yeah. Um, Briefly, but she didn't tell me what it was. Yeah. But yeah. Um. So once again, oh, uh, since I just kind of started this one, I guess I should probably say. Uh, hello, and again, welcome to Bit Death. I'm Sanjay Ramones. This is Megan. Hi. Um, <laughs> And, um, once again, where can we find your things? My things. Um, photography uh, is, um, Shutterblur Photography on Facebook, Mm -hmm. mainly, only. And then Mm -hmm. I'm on Twitter at Monarch underscore, underscore star. (laughs) I can't talk. Um, I guess my cosplay page, if they're interested in that kind of thing, is Monarch Star. My Instagram is Monarch Star. <laughs> I have, I'm not creative with names. Um, no, I mean, it's good to have a consistent Consistent, thing. yeah. Uh, it works, and it's catchy. Mm-hmm. And other than that, I can't think of anything. Cool. I have a DeviantArt page from 2007 that oh, no gosh. one should see. Don't do that. No. It's under a totally different name either, so you won't yeah. find me under Monarch Star. <laughs> ah, I yeah. can put it in the description. No, no. no. <laughs> My MySpace is out there, too, in a ghost town. 
Nope. I deleted my MySpace. I probably should. Gone forever. It's great. It looks awful. <laughs> like, you're not missing anything on MySpace. Um, Y'all oh, no. aren't either. Oh, also, MySpace is just like a weird... It's weird, the, That's what I was meaning. Yeah, it was like, designed weird. I'm like, how does this work? This does not work <laughs> well. Um, yeah, and uh, as I just now said, I'm Santiago Ramones. Um Twitter, Santiago R underscore music. And... <laughs> the same for Instagram, um, Santiago Ramones on SoundCloud, or you can find all those things on my website, SantiagoRamones.com. Long name. Yep. Uh, Eight letters in my first name, seven letters in my last name. All your things that have Santiago (laughs) R, I just read it as Santiago. Yeah. It's awesome, though. That's why I want to change it. (laughs) You're like, oh, you just opened that wound. Yeah. (laughs) Um, No, it's fine. It's better than being called Santi. I don't like being called Santi. Um, takes notes. <laughs> um, I won't do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I end each podcast by saying my three things. Love never fails. It's going to be okay. I might be wrong. Thanks for